Jadon Sancho is now a Borussia Dortmund player. He's joined on loan from Manchester United. There is no option to buy. Um, this is what he has had to say. He said, when I came into the dressing room today, it felt like coming home. I know the club inside and out. I've always been very close with the fans here and I've never lost contact with those in charge. I can't wait to see my teammates again, go out on the pitch, play football with a smile on my face, prepare goals, score goals and help qualify for the Champions League. The uh, Dortmund sporting director, Sebastian Curl, has said this as well. Jaden is an absolute difference player and I'm looking forward to seeing him back in black and yellow soon. He knows this city, Signal Iduna Park, our fans and our club. Even though he hasn't played any competitive games in the past few months, we are sure that he will quickly settle back in with us, get into top form and use his qualities to help us achieve our goals for the season. Um, Flex, it feels like this is maybe just the perfect place for him to kind of just go away somewhere and get back to, well, playing for one, but playing how he, how he used to. Yeah, it is. He... he... He made a huge move to Manchester United when Man United tracked him for a couple of seasons and Dortmund wanted huge, huge money for him and still ended up getting a fairly significant fee for him. And he'd earned the right to command that fee. He was one of the, the most, you know, exciting wingers in Europe. You know, big numbers, great ability. Um, as Olivia alluded to with his, with his stats, he's, he's been absolutely fantastic. Um, and it just hasn't worked out at Manchester United. It's a, it's a whole different pressure coming to Man United. And this isn't just a Jadon Sancho thing. Many players have come to Manchester United with big price tags and big expectancy in the last 10 years and have not fit the bill. And that's one of the saddest things about this is that he's yet another one. Um, but it's, it's the perfect situation out of, out of now. Um, and you have to revisit this in the summer. And I think for the player, it's a chance for him to get his confidence back up. Like he said in his statement, smile again, feel comfortable again and get playing. And for Manchester United, they're looking at it like if, if Shane Sancho is to leave Man United in the future, which it looks probable in the summer, how do they recoup his wages? How do they command a decent transfer fee for him? Only by letting him go out and play. And that's why there's no obligation to buy or option to buy because his stock has fallen so much in this four to five months. They need to get it to rise again and it's best for player and, and, and club. I think key as well is, is the manager we're just seeing there. This is what he did under uh, Eden Terzic the last time he was at the club. And I think, you know, he's, he's already spoken there in those initial quotes to say, my contact with the team at Borussia Dortmund has, has never stopped. Yeah. So it's pretty obvious the feeling and the kind of love that he felt from Dortmund since he left there, really, to join Manchester United. And when you look at those stats in all competitions, I mean... 50 goals, 57 assists, all in 137 games. You know, it's a, it's a pretty good return, I would say. And that is why he was one of the best wingers in European football. And that's why Manchester United chased him for so long. And, you know, I think there has to be a, a few questions over the way he was used to start with. And, you know, I think United probably signed him, well, they said they signed him as a, as a right winger. He was a right winger for United. And yeah. he played the majority of his time when he first arrived on the left-hand side. He had his injury problems. You know, he had the issue last season where, you know, Eric Ten Hag allowed him time away from the club to, to kind of mentally and physically reset, which was the best thing for both parties. And he came back and he looked pretty good. And then we thought maybe, you know, this is going to be his time to, to kick start. And then basically, as soon as the, the August transfer window closed, it all ended for him at Manchester United. Mm. And, you know, this is obviously the best thing for both parties. I think the finances work for Manchester United as well, yeah. something like three and a half million euros. Uh, according to my colleague Dharmesh Sheth, and that will rise to four million if those performance add-ons are met, like Champions League qualification, like if they qualify for the Champions League uh, in the Bundesliga. I think the majority of the wages are being covered by Borussia Dortmund as well, and, and, and again, that will, will kind of continue to uptick the, the better that Borussia Dortmund do, the more financially uh, good it is for Manchester United, this deal. So I think from their point of view, it, it all works out. For the players' point of view, it works out. I mean, maybe, maybe Dortmund fans, you know, they'll be excited to see him. It'll take him time to get up to speed. And I think sometimes we get a little bit caught up in the Premier League finances and go, oh, three and a half million, that's nothing. But I think <laughs> when you look at the European financial models, you know, it's not an insignificant outlay for a player that's only going to be there for a few months. So I think from Dortmund's point of view, they're, they're putting a little bit on Jadon Sancho to come and do well. But I think, you know, that's what he wants. Yeah, um, both of sort of flex and Dave saying it's kind of good for all parties even in the, the short term for Manchester United not to have this kind of story lurking in the background how much of a positive is that for Eric Ten Hag? Yeah it is because it's gone on for so long now and he's been asked questions about it for so long and I think 
it must just feel like a bit of a weight off Jaden Sancho's shoulders, Manchester United's shoulders, Eric Ten Hag's shoulders, because over the last few months, when it hasn't been going well for Manchester United, you're going to have questions like, well, if your attackers aren't, you know, if it isn't working, you've got a, an attacker sat on, or not even in the squad, not even training with the first team, that you could use. So I think in terms of that, I think it's brilliant for all parties. And Manchester United can now just forget about it and hope that he goes there and he plays well and he does his thing at Dortmund. Um, and I'm sure Eric Ten Hag will just be a little bit relieved that he probably won't have any more questions about him in press conferences. Yeah. Well, we'll turn to the summer now. So, if, if yeah. Eric, if, if Jaden comes back, yeah. we'll, we'll, you know, yeah. and yeah. then we'll probably turn to that. Yeah. But I do want to say there is, although I think Jaden Sancho will be absolutely fine going back there and being comfortable, there is there is a lot of pressure. It's a there, risk, there is, yeah. there is there is There is a bit of pressure here because... I think we all probably agree he'll be okay there, but if he isn't and struggles again... Then what? And Eric Ten Hag's still at Manchester United come the summer and he comes back to that and maybe Dortmund don't want to exercise an option that may present itself at the end of the season, then what happens? So I don't want to be too pessimistic because I don't believe that will happen. But in terms of the, the last four or five months that Jaden's had, it is a lot on his shoulders and that's why it's best for him to feel comfortable, mm. get confident, play with a smile on his face and, and forget those pressures and, and be the best he can be because we know he's a good player. I know we can sort of take what we want from that statement, but it feels like he almost is looking at it as another fresh start, right? We yeah. go again now. Absolutely. Which is what you like hope, you said, hope yeah, for, anyway. Smiling, I've come home, haven't stopped the contact. Mm. Like, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe he might have been thinking this for, a little, for, for longer than this time if he's always kept that contact, mm. you know? Um, I don't think we're naive enough to think that, you know, players of past clubs don't, don't just delete each other's number yeah. and never speak on WhatsApp anymore. <laughs> um, that's probably a bit too harsh. But um, I think maybe it became apparent to him maybe earlier than this Eric Ten Hag situation. So for him, a real chance to just knuckle down, play with a smile. And, I, and you know what? I'll be honest. I will enjoy seeing him have good performances out there away from Manchester United because... Even as just if, if even if you're a neutral, we want to see the most entertaining players, the players that get you off your seat, the players who you know got ability. And he's still very young; he's 23 years of age. Yeah. You, you forget how young he actually is. So, not all big moves work. Hopefully, he can reset and uh, reignite his career.